Hey guys, Ben of Seven Dog Training. Apologies if I'm a bit snivelly, I'm not getting under the weather today. <coughs> <coughs> As you can see. Now, we're just wrapping up the walk with these guys. Okay, uh, the last five minutes of each walk because Tez has reactivity issues to dogs in the car. We sit in the car park and we watch the world go by. Okay, Tez hasn't reacted to a dog in a long time. I made a video about horse free trainers killing dogs in the name of dog training a few weeks ago you see him reacting since then he's been very very good but we're still continuing to work on it that's the thing about training you have to work on it every single day guys when you think that it's sorted okay you start to get a bit lackadaisical when you switch off and then very quickly the dog can regress training is about consistency think of anything if you go to a gym as soon as you think that you've got you're happy with your body, it's very easy to get lackadaisical, miss a few days here and there, and before you know it, you're back where you started. Now, so is this having a bit of a you get me a bit unsettled, weren't you? You have to keep at it all the time, guys. Yeah. But that's not really the topic of today's conversation. The topic of today's conversation is just about we're just gonna waffle really. Uh mainly about tools, tools in dog training and how people have this negative connotation to certain tools. So I've been working with a lot of clients lately that have been going to full three trainers before me. And when the full three trainer finds out that they've switched services to me, one of the common things I hear is, Oh, you're not going to him are you? Oh, he's not the one that uses prong collars, not the one that uses e collars like all of a sudden we're going to make the dog worse but here's the news flash guys if that trainer using their unrealistic methods was actually a decent trainer people wouldn't be coming to me in the first place that, that, that that's the reality yes we use all tools in dog training yeah we use the tool that works best for the dog yeah and that might be a prong collar that could be a head collar that that could be a basic flat buckle collar it could be a harness it could be a flexi lead we use the tools that work best for that individual and what works best for that owner but the reality is it just makes me laugh that, oh you're going to that guy do your job better then they won't be coming to me yeah but the reality is when people have been working with these trainers for months and months and months and months and they're getting next to no results they are going to start seeking out other professional help, yeah? So, the real reason, it's not the tools that I'm using, it's the fact that they're coming to me, it's the fact that they refuse to open their mind to certain methodologies, and then they, then their clients end up coming to me, and that, that is something that's happening all the time, guys, every single day. Nearly every other client I work with has been to a previous trainer, a tea and biscuit dog trainer, one that wants to just freaking unload treat after treat after treat to get next to no results. But we want to talk about tools, okay? So if we look at the prong collar, right? When you think of it, the first thing that comes to your mind, right, is spikes, jamming spikes into your dog's neck. And then there's this one picture that goes through Facebook, this one picture of a dog with holes in its neck, right? And they will use that in a defense against prong collars. Right, but the reality is that's just one picture. If you go to Google and you type in collar injuries to dogs, you'll find hundreds of flat buckle collar injuries, hundreds of slip lead injuries, hundreds of harness injuries. You will. Yeah, it's not just a prong collar. If you if you want to look for a picture of a tool that's been misused that's caused abuse, you can find it on any tool on the market, guys, you can. Yeah. So it, it's it's a lame argument in their defence and it's always the same picture. But the reason people are against some of these tools is because they simply don't understand how they work or they've listened to some trainer trying to brainwash people, yeah? I see people using dogmatics or halties, the thing that goes over the dog's nose all the time, right? And I tell people, you do this with any dog, all right? Find a dog that's ever worn a prong collar. Find a dog that's ever worn a dogmatic, right? Stick each tool on the dog and see which one the dog responds to. In a more positive manner i guarantee you it will be the prong collar yeah because here's the thing right the most sensitive part of a dog's body is their snout so if you're going to stick something over that it's very uncomfortable and you can experiment right now guys right now call your dog over to you 
get your hands, make a little fist, stick it over your dog's snout and apply a little bit of pressure. Count how long it takes before your dog backs out of that. Then do the same thing around its neck. Just hold it around the neck, apply the same amount of pressure and see how long it takes for your dog to back away from that. Yeah, I guarantee you the dog will back away quicker once you put something around its snout. It's the same reason that many dogs don't like muzzles. Yeah, but we are using head collars as a means of control. And I'm not against head collars at all. I recently turned the slip lead into a figure of eight slip lead for a beagle. Yeah, because it was the right tool for that dog. Uh, and we've used dogmatics in the past because it was the right tool for that dog. But I'm seeing people use these tools all the time in the name of training because they market it as gentle leaders, things like this, and the dogs simply fucking hate it. Yeah? And when I tell them that there's a better option, and as soon as I present a prong collar, people are like, oh my god, that's barbaric. But why is it barbaric, guys? Why? They're not sharp spikes. They don't puncture or penetrate the neck. They don't. They apply gentle pressure. Pressure that your dog perceives as less discomforting than the head collar. But people are still willing to use head collars, and trainers, even positive trainers, are using head collars over a prong collar simply because of the stigma attached to it. It's the same as e-collars, yeah? The reason we use these tools, guys, is because these tools work, yeah? And the reason that your clients are coming to me, guys, is because these tools work. And your refusal to use these tools makes you a closed-minded person. You telling people that you're getting result after result after result. Well, why are your clients coming to me, guys? Why? Answer me that. Somebody commented on a post yesterday. I put a post up of a dachshund that was getting stressed when Sammy and their dachshund, the other dachshund in the house, were running around. And it was just a one-minute segment on corrections. And you saw how a gentle lead pop on the slip lead completely snapped the dog out of it. The dog started paying attention to the owner. He got an instant reward, and the whole demeanour of the dog changed from a simple correction. And then uh, a friend of mine, Nikki Walden, who's a dog trainer, commented on the post saying that she worked with a dachshund a couple of years ago, and the person had been working with a trainer for months and months and months just to get a dog, one dog, at the opposite end of like an airport hangar, I believe she said, and, and you know how big airport hangars are, right? And they saw that as good results. And then another dog entered the fray and the dog lost his shit. And then Nikki corrected the dog when she started working with it, one pop on the lead. And all of a sudden the dog showed interest in wanting to go see the dog because somebody told it no, yeah, and gave it a correction. And it, 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 it's your refusal to correct dogs that is inevitably screwing you guys over yeah it's this unrealistic ideology that you cling to yeah you would rather use tools that are less effective to preserve your image yeah and the reality is you're not getting the results you're looking for you're not you're doing a terrible disservice to your clients and you're doing a terrible disservice to dogs yeah because here's the thing, we're not lazy quick fix trainers. A lot of the dogs we work with have really complex issues and it takes time. But we use tools to help that process. We use tools to help that dog, regardless of what that tool is. Yeah? And we get the results. There's a reason that balanced trainers are getting results everywhere. And there's a reason that purely positive trainers are losing clients to balanced trainers. And it's not, as you say, because the tra clients are looking for a quick fix. Because there isn't quick fix dog training. There isn't. It's a process. Yeah? But you need to stop telling people <laughs> and slagging off us guys because we use certain tools. Especially if you don't understand the tools. It's like an e-collar. There's like whole campaigns against e-collars, how bad they are. And yes, I do agree. <laughs> there are some really bad e-collars on the market. Yeah, you can get a 20 quid e-collar from China and it's going to suck on the lowest level. Or you can buy a 200 pound e-collar that the technology inside it is amazing. Yeah. And yes, when we use them, we do use them to create discomfort a small portion of the time. We do. But that's only when a dog understands the tool. 90% of the e collar use is low levels. Low levels that the dog understands what it is, knows how to turn off the e collar. Yeah? It's not electrocuting the dog, otherwise, the dog couldn't swim in the e collar. Yeah? 
other videos of dogs swimming and I called them out of the water pushing the e collar and it's, it's the same reaction they have when they're on land if it was actual an electric shock the dog would be jumping for a year but again what's happening is we are listening to the stigma without even using our heads oh e collars are bad are they really what is your experience with e collars for you to say they're bad you've heard someone say it or you felt a cheap shitty one if you look at trainers that are against e collars when when they stick an e collar on their neck to show you how painful they are they always have a cheap model on their neck and the cheap models are painful and i would wish 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 they were taken off the shelves guys i do you'll never see them with a 200 pound mini educator or a dog trailer on their neck why because if they showed you that the truth is you would change your mind about it but they don't want you to change their mind about it because simply they cannot use an e-collar because it would tarnish their reputation they care more about your reputation than the actual dogs itself yeah and i am i'm, <laughs> I'm really tired i mean i'm thankful for the fact that you're screwing up well not that you're screwing up dogs i'm thankful for the fact that you're limited which means i get so much more business as a result yeah particularly if you're a local trainer in the area uh i happen to travel all over the country at the minute to help people with their dogs and you're giving trainers like myself business which which is cool right but when you care more about your reputation than the dog itself that's not good guys yeah all tools have a purpose in dog training and designed to help a dog yeah when the person invented the prong collar they didn't invent it to hurt the dog. When the person invented the e-collar, even though they were cheap shitty, the idea was to stop dangerous behaviours. Yeah? And I'm going to upload a video in the upcoming days of a dog that I recently worked with with an e-collar. Yeah? <laughs> the lady was giving the dog a sausage, and it's spitting out a sausage. Not because it's afraid. We hadn't even started e-collar training at this time. And if you look at the dog's demeanour, it's a really 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 positive dog yeah happy go lucky look at me look at me tail wagging yeah nothing bad's happening to this dog the dog's not stressed the dog's just this this, this this is the dog it's not food motivated at all as soon as he knows he's going outside he doesn't care about the food he's not anxious nothing like that he just wants to come outside that's the reward for the dog but the dog's a hunting dog he can't be let off the lead uh because he will he has buggered off and he will bugger off yeah so he needs something else and I'm going to also upload a video of Logan, the Doberman we worked with who went for a year and a half of purely positive trainers before the lady travelled down from London to see us and we remote collar trained her dog that dog is now off lead everywhere around the streets, in parks, in fields and the advice to her was just keep using treats finding a higher value treats but once you've gone through liver cake, once you've gone through steak, once you've gone through sausage, cheese chicken cooked or raw beef once you've gone through all of this stuff and it's still not working because what you're not realizing is the reward the dog wants is the big wide world and nothing else matters than having that off lead freedom to that dog being able to sniff being able to cock it's like being able to run around like a dog and you're still trying to force food down the dog not only are you not listening to the dog but again you're being unrealistic in your expectations to help the dog and then eventually the client leaves you. Yeah? Rewards. Rewards in dog training. We don't get to decide what's the most rewarding thing for the dog. And a lot of dogs would rather be off their lead, running around, or rather be cocking their leg. And many times, people can't achieve that level with their dog because the rewards you're trying to offer cannot compete with that. It's the same as squirrel. I challenge any purely positive dog trainer to go to the woods if their dog's got any sort of drive let the dog off the lead, completely off the lead, all right, when the squirrel's around, or livestock around, cats around, all right, let it off the lead, run around, and I define you to try and call your dog back if it's chasing a squirrel, upload a video, prove me wrong, prove, to, show me you can do it, guys, yeah, when I ask these clients, uh, sorry, not these clients, when I ask these trainers to send me a video, uh, sorry, when, when they say something negative on my post, I always look straight on their page and do you know what I don't find videos and the excuse is oh I'm on my own I've got no one to film uh, oh my clients won't like me filming 
oh, it's boring, or oh, I don't have to prove myself to you. I don't have to prove myself to you guys. Yeah? But the reality is, I'm uploading videos to help people. The amount of people that are contacting me because they watch my videos. Yeah? Just sticking out tons of free content out there because what we do to help dogs, I'm proud of. Yeah? I'm proud of what we do to help dogs. Yeah? And I like to show people that there's hope out there. I like to show people that you can have a dog that's a wreck and show them the process and how the dog is now and we do regular updates on each dog i like to educate people about all subjects even taboo subjects yeah educate people about tools correct use of tools yeah and that's why we upload the videos and the reality guys if your purely positive training was working your full screen methods you'd be uploading videos yeah not videos of you in a classroom not videos of you working with puppies Videos in the real world with real aggression cases, real high drive dogs, you'll be uploading those videos and you would be able to get those dogs off lead if your methods worked. Yeah, and it wouldn't be taking you 15, 16, 17, 18 months, two years just to get close to a dog. Yeah, think about it like this the dog's lifespan in comparison to a human is incredibly, incredibly short. Yeah, a year to you training a dog might not seem like a big deal you can lie to your clients and say that training takes time but the reality is yeah a year to a dog is a long time a very long time it's the difference between a dog being a puppy and an adolescent it can be the difference between the adolescence and adulthood it can be the difference between adulthood and seniority yeah average lifespan of a dog what 12 to 14 years yeah average lifespan of a human 70 to 80 like that so you drag in that training month after month after month after month next to no results. That's more stress for the dog. That's more stress than an e collar is going to cause. That's more stress than a prong collar is going to cause. Yeah. So next time you want to bad mouth me, yeah, put your money where your mouth is. Come and say it to my face. Yeah. Don't bad mouth me, bad mouth me to clients that are leaving you to come to me because they're leaving you to come to me because you failed them yeah dress it up as much as you want as long as you're failing dogs guys you're going to keep losing dogs to people that use e-collars that use prong collars yeah stop hiding behind this methodology and train the fucking dog have a good day